In an earlier video, we met the Noble Spirits, those honorable leaders and warriors that define the heart and soul of the Glades. Today we're going to be exploring a different kind of Sylvaneth, often classified as the Forest Folk. And to do so, we need to understand this concept of then and now, intended purpose and painful reality. As we mentioned before, the Sylvaneth were made with a purpose. Bring life to the realms, foster gardens and glades, nurture fauna, expand forests, and make the realms teem with life. These are gardeners, custodians, caretakers of the living realms, and in the age of myth, there were few threats to this purpose. When something did arise, or there was a conflict that did brew, the noble spirits would deal with it. They were, in effect, the guardians of the more gentle forest folk that we're going to talk about today. Now, everything changed with the Age of Chaos. The gates of hell had opened, and no one was going to be spared from warfare. This was an apocalyptic, all-hands-on-deck moment. The forest folk, meaning dryads and branch wraiths largely, had three options, and that was fight, flee, or die. Those who didn't evolve kind of their mentality fast enough for war were, of course, the first to go. Just as the forest and landscapes that they nurtured would adapt their environment, so too the forest folk had to evolve to meet this new threat. Their bark hardened, their limbs sharpened. The rabble of gardeners had become a very feral army, full of wrath and rage and seeing the ruination of their life's work. And just as sunlight and water turned seeds into a tree, war and rage turned them into warriors and killers. Their skills that had been nurtured by ages had become weapons. Traversing the forest and secret passages became ambushing tactics. Branches that were used for the tender care of the gardens became crooked scythes, tipped with the blood of their enemies. So there's the concept we were talking about, the then and now, the intended purpose, which is what they are actively doing right now. This is important to understand because as you talk about these various units, it mentions their original role as caretakers and facilitators of life, but also gets dark when it talks about what they're actively doing, how they truly do fight and loathe chaos. So we're going to start off the discussion talking about branch wraiths. These are the leaders of all but the most wayward forest folk, very matriarchal in nature, and their role is to shepherd and guide the forest folk, the dryads mostly. Without a branch wraith to guide them, the dryads and forest folk are pretty much a mindless rabble, more like a mob of disorganized brawlers than an army. And it requires a sharp mind to keep them focused, someone who can fight smart as well as hard. They can organize guerrilla warfare for maximum effectiveness. And it takes a lot of charisma and power and authority to do that because it's very hard to corral that kind of anger. And though their methods might seem harsh and they might seem demanding, the ultimate cause is that it's better for the Dryads to fight this way than to be struck down individually disorganized. Amongst the Forest Folk specifically, they can also hear the Spirit Song better than any others. And this makes them really important because that's kind of their channel to the outside world. You gotta understand that there might be one glade, meaning like one original family of trees that are spread out across a massive distance, so someone needs to be able to hear the call for help or issue it in an emergency. They're often aged and scarred by a war, that's how they accrue this knowledge and this wisdom, and all of these qualities make them natural leaders for the hordes of dryads. Now moving into those Sylvaneth that the branch wraiths serve and lead. These are the Dryad. They are by far the most numerous of all Sylvaneth. Dryads are spread wide and far across the realms and often are the first line of defense against intrusion from any force, but particularly chaos. They are the teeming mobs of anger and vengeance. They throw themselves at any aggressors in the defense of their glade or forest. This is the mindless horde that the branch wraith has to guide and temper, and she has her hands full with that. Now, dryads aren't idiots. They do have some kind of low-level intelligence. They don't think about big things like the larger strategy or grand plans. They only see the here and now. They see the threat that's right before them. Their rage just builds up, and they have this impulsive instinct to attack kind of mindlessly and savagely. Their branches, as we said before, have sharpened, they can puncture into a Chaos Warrior's armor. Their branches and bark have toughened over the harsh centuries. And they're also described as somewhat flighty, impulsive, and emotion-driven. They sing all different kinds of songs as they're tearing up the enemy. Their rally cries for war, or dirges kind of when they're losing. And some noble spirits look down on dryads as simpletons, and really that's unfair and unfounded. That same simpleness, in quotes, keeps them in the moment. 
It cares about the threat that's right before them. When you have someone who doesn't have the big lofty grand plan in their mind, you know, the here and now matters. The land that we have cultivated for life matters and so they take care of that right away. They answer quicker and more readily to any call for help than any other Sylvaneth. Again, when you're not bogged down with those higher thoughts, if someone, your brother asks for help, you just go help them. There's nothing else to it. And that kind of close-knit, instinctual reaction is really important as the first line of defense, especially when it's the most numerous type. That kind of personal action, the assumption that no one else is going to help them, so I need to help them, is really great. So why are these units in particular very cool? First up, I love horde armies. These are the most numerous of all Sylvaneth. They attack as a wild mob, which is just right up my alley. I like that they can operate kind of as a self-contained entity. A grove or glade may have dozens of forest folk clans spread all across a realm. And they're out doing stuff out there, they're tending gardens, they're growing forests, nurturing life. And even though it's just kind of a subset within a faction, it can be filled with a lot of personality. They have a great leader and hordes of angry trees that they need to keep in line. Also, in both the entries for these units, there's kind of a reoccurring theme that enters, and that is the idea of pragmatism. Dealing with situations and forming an understanding based on experience and practical opportunities rather than theoretical things. And I kind of identify a lot of them. I'm a very practical person. Chaos is in the woods? Let's go stop them. I'm not going to assume that no one else will. Whereas Tree Lord Ancients might see the wisdom in letting the Chaos people take this certain location and then we'll fall back and we'll secure the next one. That's a battle plan. That's a strategy. But the Sylvaneth don't, sorry, the Dryads don't see it that way. They're like, someone's on my turf. Let's go get them. You hit me, I'm going to hit you back harder. And everyone we talked about before, all of the noble spirits, they have this kind of perspective that age and warfare training gives them. But forest folk are kind of the nitty gritty everyday people with that perspective. They see and they do. And while that can make them seem like simpletons, the kind of personal responsibility and instant motivation to act has saved the woods countless times. When someone calls for help, they are there. You ever have that super crazy friend who seems very flighty and they're kind of weird, but the second you ask for help, they're right there to help you. They give you the shirt off their back. This is them, a good friend to have, especially when they're the most numerous part of your entire army. I think they really contrast and complement the more kind of lofty minded leadership because that same short sighted nature of them sees life bloom across the realms. It answers the call of Alariel faster than any others, and it deals with threats in a fluid and real-time way. And remember, it's easy to call them dim-witted, but they have a lot of responsibilities as well. They were still designed to be gardeners and tenders of the realm, but now this new design of warrior has entered their minds. Balancing the two is not an easy task, and as such, you shouldn't look down on them. And there's just something about this idea of taking a rabble of, like, farmers and gardeners and turning it into this kind of militia. We saw this with some historical movies like The Patriot or Braveheart where you get a central figure who kind of bands an army together and they become a mobile militia type thing and that's kind of what we're seeing here. They're not gonna win grand battles on an epic scale out in the open but they're gonna do everything they can to contribute to the war. They're sold out. They want to participate but the Branch Wraith has to balance that with the fact that these are not born and bred warriors. So like I said, they need to fight smart, not hard. And friends, that is everything there is about the Forest Folk. Thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next Age of Sigmar lore video.